So this is a quick initial impression on the new Husqvarna uh, PW3100. I recently got this at Costco and so far so good. Um, I've been able to actually pressure wash my entire driveway using a surface cleaner. And so far, I think it's an okay uh, pressure washer. So as of April 2020, this pressure washer is going for $269 at Costco. So $80 off uh, manufacturer um, incentive coupon, I believe. And at that price point, I believe this is a good buy. Um, however, there is some shortcomings about this pressure washer uh, that I want to kind of point out. First of all, if you look at it, it's very basic. It's just a, basically a motor, a pump, and a frame. Uh, as simple as it can get. One of the things I do not like, so <laughs> look at this. You have a place to put a bottle, but they don't give you the actual bottle itself. Now what you do get is this tubing, very simple tubing, and they expect you to provide your own bottle. So if you look at the actual picture that they have, this little bottle right here, they didn't include that bottle. I would imagine from a manufacturer point of view, that's probably a 50 cent bottle, maybe less than that. And they couldn't bother to include a very simple plastic bottle for you to put right there. To put the mount, this piece of metal, I'm pretty sure this costs a lot more than the bottle itself. But they gave you the tubing. So, um, you know, it would be nice if they gave you the plastic bottle, but they don't. So you pretty much have to use your own jug, your own means and kind of figure it out. The other issue I have is the Brick and Stratton engine. I am not going to fall for that gimmick of just check your oil and add as you need to go. I am not a mechanic, but I know very well if you just leave old oil in the engine and you just keep adding, it's not going to last. They're saying for the life of the engine, you do not have to change it. You can just check it. But they never really tell you what the life of the engine is. One can deduce that perhaps the life of the engine is just their two year warranty that they give. After the two years up, I guess they're just expecting this to die and you, they want you to go out and buy a new pressure washer. I believe that's called plant obsolescence and that's pretty much what they expect you, the consumer to do is just check your oil and add as you need and never have to change it. So don't listen to that. What you wanna do every single year, remove the dip stip, tilt it to its side and collect the oil and then add some new oil to that. Do that once a year and you know, hopefully you can get a good 10 years out of this. The other issue I have is, you can't tell, but you know, you can, I'm pointing at it right now. This is plastic, this is a carburetor. Um, I've never had a Briggs & Stratton engine um, in about 15 years and on my last Briggs & Stratton, it actually had a, a metal carburetor. Um, so I'm not a big fan of these plastic carburetors. Um, I mean, I think it's a really cool innovation that they figured it out. Um, they you can still maintenance it. I've seen a couple of videos on how to do that. Um, but the reason why I have issue with that being plastic is here's the fuel, here's the carburetor. The fuel line is down here. There's no way for you to shut the fuel off. I, I had a Honda um, lawnmower as well as a, a, I used a Yamaha pressure washer that if you look at my videos, you'll see me do a review on that as well too. Um, the Yamaha as well as the Honda engines, they have a little valve that you can just turn off the fuel and then rub the carburetor dry. That's what you want to do. The reason why these small engines tend to go bad and gunk up is because you leave bad fuel in there. Um, so one way to mitigate that is if you shut off the fuel, you can run it dry and keep it in storage for you know a couple of weeks. If you're going to leave it in storage for a couple months, you want to run um, the whole fuel tank dry or, you know, just come, uh, drain it out. But there really isn't any easy way to do that. So the combination of this being plastic, no way for you to shut off your fuel leads me to believe that a lot of people in the near future, maybe two or three years down the line, they're going to have problems with this pressure washer not starting. All right. So with that said, this pressure washer starts easy all the time. Um, every time I turn it on, so you turn it on this way and you pull the cord, that's it. That's all you had to do. You don't have to worry about chokes or whatnot. And it starts each and every single time because this is a brand new pressure washer. Question is, is how long is it going to last and how long is this going to do that? So right now, I absolutely, I ran my whole pressure washer dry, which is hard to do because you're not supposed to run a pressure washer without a hose. Um, so this afternoon, I just finished pressure washing my whole driveway and I just left it running, um, depressed the hose, and just had water running through it while the engine was revving and it finally went through all the fuel. 
Uh, I did that because I want to keep it dry so that next time I, this is ready to be used, I don't have to worry about um, the carburetor being gunked up or anything. So obviously when it comes to fuel, you want to make sure that you use either E10 or regular gasoline. And when I mean regular gasoline, the, the good stuff, the stuff that brings absolutely no ethanol, which is really hard to find. I live out in the suburbs near Washington, D.C., and it is extremely difficult for me to actually get gasoline without ethanol. I really have to go out of my way to find gasoline with no ethanol. There's really nothing local around here. So what you want to do is you want to use fuel stabilizer. So quick tips is if you are using this pressure washer and you plan on using it within two weeks, um, I guess you can leave gasoline in here, but I wouldn't recommend it in the past two weeks. Try to run this dry. In an ideal situation, this would have a valve that you would turn off and you would run it dry, but you can't do that with this pressure washer. So that's my issue I have with this. Other than that, this is really good. So what I like is down here, they give you the specs. So when you go up here, reading off the specs, the red, 3,100 PSI at 2.1 GPM. This one right here, yellow. Um, this is a 15 degree, uh, that's 2,800 PSI at 2.4 gallons per minute. Green one, uh, that's a 25 um, angle. This is also at 2,800 PSI and 2.4 GPM. And the white one, the 40 degree, uh, this is 2,400 PSI at 2.5 GPM. So one good thing um, I like is they actually have the pump in the front. This is really up to your personal preference. For me, I actually prefer it in the front because what that means is when the hose is connected, I can just tilt this and drag it. So as I'm going down the driveway, it's just easier to maneuver versus the other ones that tend to have it in the back that tends to kind of tend to drag it a little bit and you can kind of trip over it or actually go over it with your wheel. So that's one little good benefit I have. The other good benefit is this, made in the USA. So this Briggs & Stratton engine that I'm giving a really hard time, um, the parts are going to be relatively inexpensive. So if you had, let's say, like a Yamaha engine, Yamaha's, you know, a carburetor for that. It's about like over $110, where you can probably get a replacement carburetor for far less than that on this Briggs & Stratton engine. Uh, as I mentioned before, you know, this carburetor being plastic, I mean, it's a good and a bad thing. For me, like it, it, from an engineer perspective, it's pretty cool that they figured it out. Um, but from a user perspective, I just don't know the, the durability of a plastic carburetor. Um, from looking at a couple of videos, they do look fairly simple to clean. And uh, I've touched up on a couple of videos and I plan on maintaining this. All right, so this was the oil that came with it. I actually ended up putting the whole bag. I've read a couple people who said that the whole bag is too much. I've heard, read a couple other reviews where they said the whole bag wasn't enough. I was very, very careful. Uh, but the whole entire bag was the perfect amount of oil that I needed. I, I don't know why that is. I, I imagine that it would be too much. But hey, um, it was just the, the perfect amount of what I needed. Uh, I made sure to uh, look at the dipstick as I was putting the oil in for the very first time. So for the users out there who, when you first buy this, just don't dump the whole contents of oil in it. Uh, dump probably about 80%, 75% of it. Check the dipstick um, and then, you know, periodically check it again. Um, I don't know, maybe I got lucky. Maybe I just didn't read the dipstick right or whatnot, but that's my, my impression. So I use this pressure washer along with this surface cleaner. And it did an awesome job, and you'll see in a second. So you can take a look at my sidewalk, how nice and clean it is, until you'll get to where my neighbor's at. <laughs> Dirty. It's, like, it's kind of night and day, how you can tell that to this. Overall, at the price point, which is $269, this is a good pressure washer. It doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles, so it does the job well for what you need it for. Another thing that's very confusing is... I don't really know if this is a Husqvarna. Yes, it has Husqvarna on it, but everything I've read in online and all my research pretty much says this is a Briggs & Stratton pressure washer that's just been branded as Husqvarna. I really couldn't find much of anything off of Husqvarna. So the other issue I had is I could not find the model of this engine for the life of me. You actually have to read this QR code back there, which then opens up a link that takes you to the Briggs & Stratton website. And only there do you actually get all the details about what type of engine this is. So for example, if you ever need to find replacement parts, 
Um, that's the only way. It, it doesn't really tell you at all. Uh, I've tried reading all the numbers and um, everything on here. Um, and pretty much the only way I was able to get the information from this engine is by reading that QR code. By the way, this model number, if you look on Brits and Stratton's website, it does bring it up. So um, everything that leads me to believe that this is actually a Briggs and Stratton uh, rebranded Husqvarna pressure washer. Uh, now that's a bad thing, but you know, it's a very basic yet powerful pressure washer. Like I mentioned before, it doesn't have bells. It doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles, but you don't really need it. It does the job for what you need it for. And so far I am happy with this purchase.